Hi guys, so I'm going to show you how you can quickly build a GraphQL API on top of Cosmos BDB SQL API. This uses a tool called the Data API Builder or DAB, and this is a tool from Microsoft that allows you to quickly build these APIs without having to build a bunch of scaffolding inside of something like .NET that's manual coding. So it's basically an automation tool that gets you up and running fairly quickly. The reason why this is a fairly big deal in the Cosmos DB space is because GraphQL and Cosmos DB has long been kind of disconnected from one another, but GraphQL has been on the rise in the last few years, and it's a great way of doing queries against a database, especially a database that uses hierarchical data storage like the SQL API in Cosmos DB. You can certainly use this with other databases. It supports SQL Server, Postgres, and MySQL as well. Now, other tools for these other databases I mentioned have existed for a long time, and there are a few tools that exist for Cosmos DB, but to me, this is probably one of the best tools I've seen in a long time for Cosmos that automate the process of creating APIs that you can quickly spin up for data access. So I'm going to just cut to the chase and show you how to install the tool. And then I'm going to create an API using a database that I already have. So I'm basically just going to go to my database, use the documents that I have there and show you how you can automate this whole workflow and be up and running very quickly. So the first thing you'll need to install is the .NET Core SDKs, and that's going to give you the .NET API. So this allows you to install tools using the .NET command line. So the command I'm going to run is simply to install uh, .NET tools, install global uh, from the global APIs, Microsoft.data API builder, and then just run this command and it's going to uh, install this. Since I've already installed this tool, you can see that it's going to give me an error here. But once you've installed it, you're ready to go. And it's just a command line tool at this point. So once you have the tools installed, the next thing we need to do is generate the schema for the GraphQL queries. Now, Cosmos DB doesn't have a schema. It's a schemaless database. So you can have the schemas basically be formed however you want to, but GraphQL is going to need a schema so that it knows how to translate these queries into the native query language, in this case, SQL, under the hood. So to do that, I'm just going to grab a sample document out of my database, and I'm going to use a tool to get me the schema for GraphQL. So I'm going to use Data Explorer here, and I'm going to go into a database that I called IoT Data. And this is just a demo database I've been using for a lot of other things. And I'm just going to grab one of these documents here. So I'm going to click on this one and just copy the contents of this document. And then I'm going to go over here to this tool at transform.tools, and then it's the uh, JSON to GraphQL. I'm simply going to paste in the JSON, and it's going to give me this GraphQL uh, output right here. And this is the schema that GraphQL needs. So I'm going to copy and paste this into a text editor. So the text editor I'm going to be using is Notepad++. So let me pull this over onto the screen right here. And I'm going to paste this in. And I'm just going to call this telemetry. And I'm going to modify it slightly. And I'm going to put at model. And I'm going to delete some of these fields that I don't need on this right here. I don't need the RID self or tag or attachments. Um, or the TS, um, these other fields I do need. Um, and you can work through this and remove the fields that you don't need, but I'm pretty much going to keep the rest of this intact. So now that I have this, I'm going to save this off uh, into a file. And I'm going to call this file, uh, I'm going to call it over, create a new folder under my source here, and I'm going to call it a GQL uh, demo. And um, I'm going to call this one schema.gql. And this is then going to just basically be the basis for the schema that I'm going to be using with DAB to build the API with. So now that I have this, all I need to do is pretty much just wire up uh, DAB to use this schema and then wire up DAB to also hit my Cosmos database and we'll be up and running with an API. So the next thing I need to build is the config file for DAB to work. So this uses a command called DAB init. And this basically just gives you the parameters that we need. So basically what I'm going to tell it is the database type, which is Cosmos DB uh, SQL API or NoSQL. I'm going to give it the schema right here. That's that file I just built. And then this is going to give me the name of the database, which in my case is IoT data, and then a connection string. So you would then put in your connection string right there, which you can get from the Azure portal under keys for your database. And then the host mode is development. That could be production or, or uh, development in this case. So this would be the command to run. So I'm going to go ahead and run this and create the DAB config file that this will create. And I'll show you what that does. So I'm going to run that behind the scenes so you don't see my account uh, string. But in any case, once I'm done with that, you'll see the file built. So once you run it, you'll get some output that looks something like this. And it's going to basically point you to the config file. So this is going to be in that source folder where I dropped that GQL file. So 
I'm going to open this file up in Notepad++. So this is a pretty straightforward um, file. It just has information about your environment. So this one has information about my database and how to connect to it. And then it has information about the runtime. So this one is going to tell me to use GraphQL. And GraphQL, of course, is the uh, language that I'm using. So this does have another RESTful endpoint that you can use for other databases, but it's not going to be conducive to hierarchical documents like you get in NoSQL. So we're not going to be using that one. We're mostly using GraphQL, which is the one that will give us those hierarchical documents like we want. And the, the host information down here is where you can set up things like authentication and other types of settings like that. I'm not going to get into that right now, but it is possible to secure this with things like OAuth out of Azure AD. Now, the only thing I need to modify is this entities block, and this is where I'm going to tell it what my root entity is essentially so that I can then use that to query against. So now I'm going to add the entities to this. Now, the entities are going to be the things I'm going to be querying against, and this is where I specify the container. Since I've already specified my database and my connection string, I'm going to basically tell this to query against a specific container, and the source of it is going to be the container telemetry. Now, the queries will pluralize this. So basically what you needed to have is the singular right here. So telemetry. And then when I query this, I'm going to say telemetries uh, for a bunch of these. If I want more than one, for instance, I want to specify uh, the pluralization of this using the GraphQL language. And that's just one of the idiosyncrasies of GraphQL. Um, of course, you could put permissions and roles in this uh, for uh, this i'm using anonymous which you probably wouldn't want to use for production but in any case you can put the permissions around this api using these permission sets right here that it gives you now it doesn't support rest but it does support graphql like i said and so this basically just wires it up to that container so that container is going to contain the telemetry docs that are going to be found inside of this guy right here and so this one's using type telemetry and that's got this at model so that's basically telling the query engine that this is kind of the root of my uh, document structure that I'm going to be using. So let's go ahead and build this guy using this config file and start it. I say the file and I'm just going to call dab to start right now. And that's going to start this guy up. And you can see that it's running on local host 5000. And now I'm going to use Postman, which is a GraphQL client to connect to this. So I have Postman up now. And now Postman works as a GraphQL client. Now, this allows me to run GraphQLs against an endpoint. So to set this up, just set up an HTTP post. So I'm going to be using this HTTP endpoint, which is my local host 5000. And I'm going to slash GraphQL, which is the URL for my GraphQL queries, I'm doing a post uh, against that endpoint right there. Now you want to set the encoding type to GraphQL right here. And so this is um, one of the many that it supports, but it natively will support this one. So now I then put my query into the syntax that GraphQL uses. And so it looks like this. So I'm basically going to request telemetries because it pluralizes it. And I'm going to say, give me the first 50 and uh, sort them in descending order by ID. So it's going to send that request and it's going to give me a bunch of data back just in an array. And it's basically JavaScript uh, object notation. So JSON data right here now, but they're still working out some of the bugs and adding features to it. And as this product matures, sure, it'll be a great project for building APIs on top of your data sources in Azure. Now, Cosmos DB is the one I'm most optimistic about. I certainly think it's going to be one of the best ways to build GraphQL APIs on top of uh, Cosmos DB because beforehand that was a fairly manual task and it was very arduous, but this kind of takes the edge off of it because you don't really have to worry about that translation layer between GraphQL and the SQL API. You don't have to build all the adapting code for that. So it just does it for you. So I'm looking forward to see where this goes and hopefully as it matures, it'll be at wider adoption. We'll be seeing a lot more of this in the future with Cosmos DB. If you like this content, please consider subscribing to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button. You can also like this content by clicking on the thumbs up or share this content with your friends and also comment in the comment section down below. You can also find me online at www.blaze.net or on Twitter at The One Mule. And as always, thanks for watching.